I'm Jeanette Cains from Jewelry Arts Inc. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to prepare my favorite ceramic crucible so that we can pour our own gold or silver or whatever metal we wanna pour. So we are gonna have a whole lot of fun in the studio tonight. We are gonna to pour some gold. So Valerie has some two shiny new pristine crucibles that we're gonna prep up with some borax so that the gold will just slide right out of there. So I just showed her how to use a file and kind of refine the um, the little spout there a little bit. So she's just gonna file. We're gonna do that over a garbage can, trying to stay tidy. So I'll do a close up of that. Here it goes. We're just trying to make sure we have a really clear, neat path for the gold to follow. So that hopefully it wants to do what we want it to do. And we will talk later, by the way, about these crucibles. These are my very favorite. It's called the Whip. Great name also, by the way, but. So she's opening up it a little bit because we don't want to have just a tiny opening there. And we'll tune back in when it's all done. So here's our lovely crucible. So we have just sort of accentuated the spout a little bit to make sure we've got a nice path for our gold to go down. So uh, now we're gonna coat them in borax. Yay, back to the crucibles. So the, the next thing I'm gonna do before I put all of my borax on there is I'm just gonna mark the bottoms uh, with some pencil with what they are because you're definitely gonna get little bits of gold left in there. So in other words, I want one for my 22 clean, one for my 20, one for you know, any different carrot or different color, you're gonna to wanna to use a separate crucible. So we're gonna do 22. get the mixed up. This is the little handle, the whip handle, which is so nice because you can interchange these easily. I put it in there with the spout on the side. I'm going to take a little bit of the borax. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to heat it up. It is going to poof up a little bit, which is why I'm wearing a mask. I'm also wearing a mask because it's the apocalypse. But, um, so it's multi-purpose, basically, at this stage. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna start heating it, sort of gently to start with, because like I said, it's gonna kind of, some of it's gonna poof out a little bit. So I tend to start gently, but once it starts to really get glassy, then I'll really go to town on it. Now, one thing you do want to watch for, you actually don't want too much borax in here. So when I have the whole inside of it covered, we're actually gonna tilt it and melt some more and drip any excess out. If you get like a real puddle in the bottom, it can be surprisingly insulating and you might not be able to get your gold hot enough. So I'm gonna be a little more bold now and turn the heat up a little bit. how it forms little bubbles of like glass essentially. So we'll keep adding it kind of bit by bit. Like I said, I don't want to get carried away and add too much. And I'm going to hold this and tilt. As it gets hot enough, you'll see it'll just travel around the whole thing and leave a coat in. And this is the kind of thing you only have to do once. good because it's a little time consuming. Mm 
but I definitely prefer to end it bit by bit rather than like putting an enormous amount in. dry spot right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like I said, if gold ends up sitting any place and it's dry, it'll just stick to it. But you really don't want. Just gonna flip it around a little bit so that I can get hopefully everything. I just have a couple little spots that, that I haven't gotten yet. Because basically when I tilt it, and unless I see that shine, I know that I don't have a coverage there, you know? nice and shiny. I have a tiny little bit over here and then we're going to drip it out toward the, uh, the spout so that we have that covered as well. Just a tricky angle. Yeah. Is that where that, that red spot is? is that yeah. The red spot? And obviously, I don't want to hold it in a way that it could drip out onto myself. That's why I have this uh, heat-proof surface thing down here, so that if it drips out, it doesn't matter. I once did one with too much and it took me a really long time to get it out, which is mm -hmm. why I'm being so OCD about adding a little tiny bit and pouring it around. Bitter experience, always being the best teacher. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit, flow a little more, and then we're going to basically pour it out through the spout, and that way if there's anything left, we we'll get it out. See that? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to see, basically try to get out any excess. But if only one drop came out, I don't have that much in there. But I'll see if I can get another drop or two out of there. But then that's basically it. Okay, I'll show a little close up so that you can see. But basically what we have now is this thin, glassy coating all around. The glass cooling. Yeah, exactly. You hear the little ping. So there it is, all beautiful and shiny. You see what I mean? 
So we have a thin glassy coating and that's what's gonna make our gold slide right out into the ingot mold. Perfect, so I'm gonna let Valerie prepare the other one and uh, then we're gonna alloy some gold.